is a joint meeting. Uh, we will officially turn it over to our chairwoman for the school board, um, but I have been asked by both um, state agencies to remind people that we do have a large number of people in the audience. This is a joint meeting between the towns of Blackstone, Millville on the municipal side, and our regional school district, um, who is being represented here today by both Millville and Blackstone residents. Uh, this is just an um, edification for the people in the audience. This is a meeting that is open to the public to listen, but not to participate is really meant for our joint boards to do that. So I just want to let people know there won't be uh, questions being taken from the audience or input in that regard. Please don't think that it's um, meant to do anything other than to be very productive. It's very historic for us to come together as, as uh, joint entities from each community. And with that, I would like to introduce our chairwoman of the Blackstone Millville Regional School T District, also Millville resident uh, Jane Reggio, who can open up the meeting and is jointly doing it with our respective uh, Board of Selectmen Chair, Danny Keefe, and also Joe Raposa from the town of Millville. With that, I'll have you open. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody, for participating tonight. I know that um, lots of people had to change schedules to do this. Um, it is a historic meeting, and it is very important to all of the entities that are gathered around the table today. Um, I would like to officially open this meeting uh, at 510 on uh, June 5th and invite everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We would also like to thank our guests um, from the State Department for joining us this evening, <coughs> taking time out of their schedule. I know that um, their faces are new to almost all of us, probably. Um, so I would like to go around the room and have everybody introduce um, who you are and what entity you're here representing. Um, and again, my name is Jane Reggio. I'm the chair of the Blackstone Millville Regional School Committee, and I am a resident of Millville. <coughs> Tara Larkin, Millville School Representative. Jack Keith, Blackstone member. Karen Vernon, Millville School Committee. Sarah Williams, Blackstone School Committee. Tammy Lemieux, Blackstone School Committee. Bethany Dunton, Blackstone School Committee. Steve Goodrow, Vice Chair, Blackstone Finance Committee. Margot Bick, Board of Selectmen, Blackstone. Daniel Keefe, Board of Selectmen, Blackstone. Bob Dubois, Blackstone Selectman. Uh, Daniel M. Keyes, Town Administrator, Blackstone. Mike Catalano, Board of Selectmen, Blackstone. Kathy Melson, <clears throat> Finance of Blackstone. Joe Raposa, Millville Board of Selectmen. Jennifer Dean Wing, Millville Board of Selectmen. Andrew Allward, Millville Board of Selectmen. Paul Ouellette, Chairman of the Millville Finance Committee. Uh, Mike Foster, uh, Millville Finance Committee. Aubrey Bono, Millville Finance Committee. Erica Blake, Millville Board of Selectmen. Jennifer Callahan, Town Administrator of Millville. Justin Cole, Finance Director of Millville. I'm Zach Blake, I'm the Chief of Technical Assistance for the Division of Local Services. Mary Jane Handy, Director of the Finance Division of Ray Sullivan, Associate Commissioner of School Finance, DESE. Christine Lynch, um, Director of Regional Governance from DESE. One Cop, School Business Manager. Alan Himmelberger, Superintendent of Schools. Brian, you, you guys. Yeah. Uh, Brian Pacheco, uh, Millville Fincom. Yeah, and Mike Pacheco, Millville Fincom. Okay. Um, just so folks know, these guys should be at the table. We just have to check run out of room at the table. <laughs> but we can we can squeeze or you're good. You're good? All right. Appreciate it. Well, again, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us. And I will turn the meeting over to Mr. Sullivan and Mrs. Handy and, and let them proceed. Well, good, good evening, everybody. Thank you for uh, inviting us. We appreciate being here. Uh, I guess I was hearkened by the fact that this is a historic meeting. <laughs> um, and I guess one of the things that I'm sure we're going to be talking about is that in the future we're hoping that it's not going to be a story. That we can kind of expect folks to be getting together fairly frequently in terms of these types of issues. Because it seemed like there was a, a real sense of urgency uh, regarding the fact that uh, when the budget was being deliberated uh, for the regional school district and uh, there were some there were some issues, obviously, uh, on 
you know, on a number of fronts. So we wanted to kind of make sure that we were here to be able to answer any questions you may have, talk about the regional budget process a little bit, uh, just to kind of make sure that everyone's on the same page, and even maybe even talk about some timelines and things like that along, along the way so that maybe we can kind of build a kind of consensus. And, and again, uh, obviously we make ourselves available for these types of issues, but obviously we're available in our offices as well if you, if you need to get in touch with us. So obviously we're here to listen and, and try to do the best we can in terms of discussing how, how we view from the state perspective the budget process and let us know if, uh, if I, I don't think our ideas are that crazy. We, you know, we deal with a lot of school districts, needless to say, a lot of regional school districts. Uh, so um, we're here to be as helpful as we can try to walk through this process, if you will, and make sure that everybody understands how, how, how this should be working. Thank you. One thing I would like to go through, um, even though I'm Director of Accounts at Division of Local Services, I was a school business manager for 15 years at two regional school districts. So I know what regional schools go through. I know that regional schools need to have their budget approved by their member towns. Um, one community I worked in had eight communities that belonged mm -hmm. to the school district. It was a vocational school. The other was a two-town. Um, I'll share with you as we go through the budget process of what needs to happen. The biggest thing, and I've been quoted on this term, um, Jay's laughing, is everybody needs to play nice in the sandbox, okay? This is adults. You need to play nice in the sandbox. We expect that from the kids. We expect that from the adults. So one of the things before I'll get in on the budget itself, local government has changed dra dramatically over the last few years. You know, the complexity of what you need to do, everybody in this room, what you need to do has changed. However, what's required at the various town officials Boards and committees, you have to work together. You can't pit one town against the other. You can't pit the regional school district, can't be the bad guy. They're educating your kids. You're members of this school district. You're a partnership. Contrary to what you might think, you're a partnership. Everybody has to work together. You need to share information and you need to share resources as much as you can. So what is critical is cooperation and coordination. So what we did at both of my school districts, and one was Pathfinder Regional School District and the other was Athol Royalston, both superintendents, I was very fortunate, had a very good relationship with their towns. At Athol Royalston, we went through and we met with the FinCons. We had an all board in the fall, meaning the two towns, all their boards, FinCon, um, capital planning, all board of selectmen, the regional school district school committee. We sat in a room like this and talked early on in the budget in October about what was coming up for the towns. Because if there was something that was critical that needed to be done, then one of the other towns or one of the, the school committee could might have said, okay, well, we really need this, but because you had a fire and you have this, we'll hold off. We won't go through and get new computers this year. We'll hold off a year. That's how you work together. Everybody, you only have so much money. Everybody's cutting into that same pool of money. Something's gonna give, and what happens is a give and take. So I'm going to talk about, if I could, to how to prepare the balanced budget. Well, the regional school district has to prepare a balanced budget. Actually, everybody in Massachusetts, municipals, have to prepare a balanced budget. But the regional school committee proposes, by a majority vote, a budget that contains all their proposed expenditures. It has to be, and to be paid from general revenues of the regional school district. The budget identifies the revenue source and the amount of money that's coming in. So if they can't prepare a budget with revenue, they can have an expenditure report, expenditure budget, 
that's up here, but if the towns can only pay down here, the time to find out is not now. The time is to find out in October so that you can at least go through and get some idea of where you are. The budget has to also has to specify whether members assessments um, and the specifics to the member assessments when they propose their budgets. You might not know in December, you know what, by December, you know what the enrollment shift is. And what I used to do is I used to go through in December after the October 1 report, the December enrollments were done. I went through and I recalculated that current year, such as fiscal year 18 budget, based on those calculations of enrollment shift. So I could tell the district, even or, or the towns, even if that enrollment, even if the dollars of that budget did not go up a penny, your district was, your town was still going to have an increase because the enrollment shift. So they at least were cognizant of what the shift might be. Or you had additional students in. You don't have, unfortunately, you don't have the shift, the people beating down the doors, moving into town like some other communities. That's causing all sorts of building issues that they have over capacity of their buildings. But the school district, after they propose this budget, they go through and they have, the regional school has a budget hearing. They have a public hearing on the budget. Ironically, I've been to a couple of these hearings in my school districts for 15 years. I can count on one hand how many people used to attend public hearings. I don't know if it's the same here, saying that people don't attend the public hearing. But for some reason, they don't. But if you had a public hearing at your towns or your cities, you would go through. Um, the reason we didn't have, again, on the public hearing, the public officials coming in from the member towns, because I, with my superintendent, as myself as business manager and a superintendent, we went to visit every single FinCom and Board of Selectmen in our towns. Two towns isn't bad. When you have eight, that's 16 meetings, not counting in all boards and everything else. But we would go through and we would listen. We would go through and explain to them what we were looking for and why. So you're not reading it in the paper. You're not going through, again, beating head against the wall here in, the, in, in May. So if there was an issue with the numbers, we knew about it and we worked at it. Then after the public hearing, the school <coughs> committee adopts the budget. They have to adopt it by two thirds. Sometimes we might go through and based on the public hearing, like occasionally we might go through if something has happened in, in between the time that I met, we met early on in the year in January when we met with the FinComs or February and then when we're doing the budget. Something might have come up and we have to sharpen our pencil more so that we went through and we ha might have had to give a little relief by pulling and what we might have done kept the budget the same but used additional revenues that we might have tried to go through and not use but we went through and such as E&D might have been certified at that point and we might have had more E&D. E&D is like free cash for towns. It's excess and deficiency for the regional schools. We might have been able to pull some of that in. Then what happens, which you're all aware of, you have to get approval at your local uh, um, appropriating authority. So it has to go to town meeting and it gets approved. However, it's time to let you know that if the budget is not approved, Divisional local services may, might not, I'm not saying it always happens, but we might not be able to approve your tax rate and that budget's approved. The reason being is till you appropriate that assessment, if you don't have any other reserves, the only way you can go through and appropriate that budget for that budget, your assessment, is through taxation. 
So just wanted to go through is that there is a chief. And this has happened, and Christine will go through, Christine Lynch will go through and explain what happens when the budget is not approved at town meeting. But always in the back of mind is we cannot set a tax rate at Division of Local Services unless we know that the budget has been approved. So again, the earlier you meet, and it's again as a group, might have to get a, you might have to go through and pull more tables, but you need to go through and everybody goes through and you meet early and that's the way to go through and get a successful budget passed. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> so when you meet in um, October, in the fall, and you have all your parties around, are you looking at, um, so for the, for the town, their, their capital budget, their five, three, ten year plan? Are you looking at the school technology plan? Are, you know, are all those things sitting on the table as you're discussing these things? I go through the, and when I get a two district, they went through and they said the capital, this is what they were planning on doing. This, they were going through in um, collective bargaining, mm -hmm. might be in the middle of collective bargaining. Um, there could be something else that is coming up that you know, everybody's going through, like our utilities were, you know, skyrocketing for next year and what we would, and we would go through and share some ideas of how maybe we can help each other. Uh, we did a lot of joint purchasing. Um, people went through, people had other ideas that, and ironically, which surprised me is you, <clears throat> you have two communities that might be right next door to each other but they might not be discussing how they can share services or how they can go through and reduce costs because you're duplicating everything. And what we try to do is it gave people a chance to go through and discuss how they were going through and trying to absorb some of the cost, even with the regional school district. Thank you. Well, we've, we've found that in a lot of especially in regions as well because you know you get so many communities that are working together you know there's a there's a lot of there's a, there's a professional group called masbo which is the association of school business officials they have like these round tables that a lot of them are in you know this particular region or whatever they'll do cooperative purchasing they'll do a lot of those types of things i'm sure you know there's there's probably other groups as well that get together but again these are resources right these are resources that should be available to you that are there to, to try to help, and, and everybody's everybody's trying to swim in the same direction, you know. Hopefully, you know, uh, you know. So, uh, and, I, and I have to smile when when Mary Jane talks about playing nice in the sandbox because I, I think it's such a great metaphor. But it really is so true. It's like you know, we uh, we're happy to, we're happy to come out and help, and, and tr trust me, that's really what we're here for. Honestly, is to try to help all districts, it doesn't matter whether it's town side, school side, you know, uh, we have a great relationship with the Department of, uh, of Local Services, you know, and, uh, you know, I know when I talk to, to DOR, it's, you know, schools get all the money, I, I, I understand, you know, it's, uh, I'm, believe me, I've been in education since 1978, so I've, you know, I've kind of heard it all, but, but, but I'll tell you, you know, when, when people are working together, it makes all the difference in the world, and that's you know whether and that's true in municipal municipal departments as well as regional school districts. I think it's it's a little harder in regional school districts. You got different towns that are, you know that could have totally different demographics and what have you. So we understand that it's difficult. It's not easy, but it makes sense, and especially in this day and age, things like shared services just make so much sense. Um, so you know, uh, so right now what's going to happen? You know what. Christine will be talking about, okay, you get to June 30th and you haven't passed the budget. What happens then? All right, so in the unlikely event that a regional school district reaches June, um, July 1st and does not have a budget, meaning a locally approved budget that, as Mary Jane indicated, is approved by two-thirds of the member municipalities, in your case, it would have to be approved by unanimous vote in a two-town region. So if you reach the point where it's up, coming up to July 1st and you do not have a budget, there is a provision in the regional school district law 
that says the Commissioner of Education can set the budget uh, until such time as the local officials, the local town meetings, approve a local budget or December 1st, whichever comes first. So in the event it's July 1st, you don't have a budget, what that basically means is the school district has no authority to spend any money. So to the extent you need to pay bills, you need to pay teachers, you need to do order supplies for the year, there is no authority to spend any, any money, any dollars at all. So this law was put in place so that the district could at least operate. So the law does say that the commissioner can approve a what's called a one twelfth budget, which is based on the late the last fiscal year. In this instance, it would be fiscal eighteen, or and there's a there's a condition in there, or any other amount that the commissioner deems appropriate. What the commissioner typically has done, and this is this is I shouldn't say typically, it's pretty universally applied, is that he has set a budget based on the previous fiscal year. So in doing so, what we and what I always try to emphasize to people is that he nor the department is making a value judgment in terms of the amount of money that the state believes. Uh, is appropriate for the particular district to spend. It's merely an allowance to allow them to spend something so that they can move along until such time as the local towns vote the budget. So typically, again, we would approve a budget on the basis of one twelfth of the previous year. Now, in doing that, it's one twelfth of the previous year's total budget. It does not represent one twelfth of the previous year's town's assessment. So what that means is, if to the extent the state aid has changed, um, you, you would use the current, in this instance, fiscal 19 state aid estimates. Um, well, on July 1st, you'll hopefully you'll know what the what the real amount is, but you'll use the current fiscal 19 state aid subtract that from the last year's budget to determine what needs to be paid by the local, the two towns. <coughs> then that's a portion based on the minimum contributions. If, if you're doing it on the basis of, there's two different methods of apportioning expenses. Uh, if you're doing it on the basis of each town must meet its minimum local contribution, in any amount above that is apportioned according to the regional school district agreement, then the business manager or the, the school, school district would reconfigure those assessments and provide it to the town. So I do just want to emphasize because often towns think that it's one twelfth of what they paid in the previous year. It is not. It is based on one twelfth of the overall budget. But the assessments, because of enrollment shifts, minimum contribution shifts, state aid shifts, the assessment that you're, you might be receiving during this 112 budget process could be very different. If, in fact, you proceed through um, July, August, September, and you reach the point that it's coming on to December, there is another provision in the state law that indicates the commissioner can assume fiscal control of a district if, in fact, they have not had a local budget approved by December 1st. So in very few instances have we got to that point, and it's certainly not something that we look forward to. Um, but if it were to happen, and it has over the years happened in very limited circumstances, but if it were to happen, then the commissioner basically, um, usually through a representative from the department, um, typically Jay or myself, again, working closely with the Department of Revenue, um, it would basically mean that any fiscal decisions typically made by the school committee would need um, approval of the commissioner. So it's not, a, it's not a good position to be in because you all certainly, or lo any local officials and local residences, residents, would know better um, how they want to spend their money on the education of their students and not have folks from Malden, in our case, or Boston, in the case of DOR, you know, um, sort of second-guessing their decisions and having to to approve those decisions. So it's, it's not something that any of us like to see happen. But here again, 
Uh, it's a way for at least the district to operate. If we were to set a budget as of December 1st, obviously that's not a good period of time to set a budget. You're halfway through the fiscal year. If we were to give more money to the district than we might have during the 112 budget process, that obviously puts a burden on the towns, you know, because they're halfway through the year, they potentially have their tax rate set. All of a sudden, we might come up with a different amount of money that would cause the towns to provide more funds to the regional school district. It's a tough decision to make. On the other hand, uh, having the school district limp, limp along with last year's budget is a very difficult situation for the school district. Um, you know, with expenses, things do go up from one year to the next. And even if they were to get additional funds come January or December when the commissioner sets the final budget for the year, you're again, halfway through the year. It's difficult to say, well, let's implement that new program we were hoping to, to start or hire those new staff members or, you know, whatever it might be. So um, it's not a, I, I guess I've said this before, but it's not a good situation for anyone. Um, there is no additional state aid. There's no positive benefit necessarily, again, other than to let the district operate, is to set something for the year so that the district can operate and your students and your children can be educated. But that is the process that's outlined in law, that is the allowance, and that is the commissioner's role in terms of either establishing a 112 budget for a period of time or actually come December setting the final budget for the fiscal year and assuming some sort of fiscal control which would continue until a local budget is established for in this instance fiscal 19 or potentially into fiscal 20 if there becomes an issue in terms of moving forward into the next fiscal year so um, that is the process hopefully you won't find yourselves in that process. Um, but if so, um, obviously we would work very closely with the district and school committee, the select boards and so forth to hopefully um, allow the district to move forward and to continue the educational process for the year. So I guess I'd like to see if there's <clears throat> any questions about the process, what have you, or anything that we've said thus far before we... Uh, Move on, move on to the open discussion about long-term financial stability. Um, one thing I would like to mention, and it's, it may or may not be related to the discussion, it is related to the discussion at hand, but it's a, a little off um, topic. Um, in terms of, I noticed in terms of your regional school district agreement that um, assessments are based on, I believe, and correct me, but it's the one, it's a one-year um, student enrollment share. It's based on one year. So often districts look at their regional school district agreement um, because that is the um, sort of the Bible, the direction that you know districts have in terms of apportioning costs. And um, there are other options. It it may. Um, uh, that other districts are looking into in terms of potentially even still using enrollments but using let's say five-year enrollments or something that can kind of mitigate spikes in enrollments and enrollment shifts so I, I just throw that out there it's not directly related to the topic at hand in terms of passing a fiscal 19 budget but in terms of working together moving forward it's just something that you know you, you may want to consider taking a look at your regional school district agreement to see whether or not there might be um, a different methodology that might alleviate might might even out the assessments from some say one fiscal year to the next to the extent enrollments are shifting Anybody have any questions about the process or? I do have I know a question. Yes, go ahead. Just it's it's a point of clarification. Over the years, we do the budgets, and we always have the little number that's called additional contribution. And the discussion always comes up that when you do the additional contribution, now it becomes next year's on top of next year's base. It'll add to the base. It, could you clarify that? 
does it or does it not? In terms of the base? Yes, the base budget, the, the budget that the state... The foundation budget doesn't change. Yeah. In terms of the state... For the following year. Uh, the minimum contribution, yeah. the local contribution? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It has no impact on the following year. If, no. If, if you spend more than the foundation budget in one year, you're not... You're not locked in the yeah. following year, if that's what you're asking. Okay. So next yeah. year's foundation budget isn't going to include the additional contribution no, that we put this no, year? No, no, not at all. No, no. So no. Spending. Okay. That's what's right. Good. Yeah, you can choose in any, any given year to spend whatever, 20% higher, 10% higher, 30% higher. It goes up and down. But, you know, the next year's requirement would not be based on what you actually spent. It would be based on what you were required to spend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then move potentially from there, you know, by mm -hmm. growth factors and so forth. But, yeah. Yeah, you're not locked in. Yeah. If that's what you're afraid of. I, I understand that from your vantage point, of course. You know. Yeah. But, again, obviously, and there, you know, obviously there could be different different things at play in different years. As, as MJ was saying during their budget deliberations, a town may have a capital need that they know that they have to take care of in that year. So resources might be a little lower in terms of what's available. And if everybody understands that, because I mean, everybody has a job to do. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to make sure that the town doesn't have adequate police and fire. You know, I, you know, I often hear town administrators say, well, we should have you know, public safety reform. We had any reform. You know, um, I, I get that, but it's not the Constitution. I mean, education's in the Constitution, that it's a shared responsibility. Um, but I, I certainly understand that. But I think, again, it gets back to MJ's comment about everybody working well together to make sure that they understand each other's needs and making sure. And, it, and again, we're, we're, we've seen that to some degree in terms of you know, the reconsideration uh, of the budget from what we saw in terms of the, what the school committee has passed. You know, we give them credit for, for, for recognizing, you know, that, that there's some issues. So, you know, again, um, it's all part of that whole, that whole process of, of understanding what resources are available. And, and, and again, you gotta crawl before you can run, right? So it's, you know, you've gotta understand, you know, when the revenue numbers are coming in, what they look like, you know, there should be benchmarks during the year that you should be, you know, understanding that. So you can, you can just call those meetings and say, okay, let's have another historic meeting. You know, um, it's, it's true. I think it's uh, it would be helpful, I think, for all parties concerned. Again, if we can be helpful in any, in any stretch, let us know. We'll be happy to come down again. You know, it's, but again, it, it, it's more about working together, really. That's what, what, what we're really espousing obviously yeah, I, I would just add on Jay's point that my unit and technical assistance does precisely that is mapping out forecasts budget documents what processes look like what calendars look like and so whether it's Millville Blackstone um, or all three of you in mapping that out um, you know certainly working with Desi uh, and my team we would be happy to help in any of those configuration. So whether uh, it's Millville or Blackstone struggling with uh, a capital, you know, a 10-year capital improvement plan, we can help build that. Whether it's coming up with a 5-10 year forecast of what we'll have available, we can help you build that. We can give you those tools. Um, and so, um, you know, we're, we're willing and able to work with you uh, on doing that to help facilitate this process. I mean, part of, yeah, that's great. And I, and I, I know sometimes we get asked sometimes, What's chapter 70 going to look like 10 years from now? <laughs> What's your enrollment going to look like 10 years? I mean, it's, it's so based on that to some degree. And there's, a, there's the Foundation Budget Review Commission that, that was meeting and, and, and that, that proposed changes to the Foundation Budget as well. So some of that stuff might be a little easier to, to try to project out for 10 years. Unfortunately, with chapter 70, it's not that simple because there's a lot of a lot of different pieces that go into it, needless to say. The other piece, I guess, that I, I, we all recognize as well is that you, your towns are also members of um, Blackstone Valley. And so when we, I guess, talk about discussions and so forth, I mean, that's obviously an impact on a town budget as well. Uh, assessments to Blackstone Valley as well as tuition to other 
regional vocational school. So all of that, uh, all of that is is for the purpose of obviously of educating your students in the way, in the in the choices that that they have made in terms of the type of education. But I mean, all of that kind of comes together. I mean, you know, it's it's um, it's an educational budget. It's not Blackstone Millville's budget, but it's 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 the individual town's budgets that um, you know you have to consider and talk to the folks at Blackstone Valley and Tri County and you know some other places I guess where your students are attending um, to have some conversations as well. You know. Okay, so if I can. Um actually get a little clarification on this year's process. So those are pretty general terms, but as far as this, these towns and this district, um, the towns have both had their town meetings. The budget wasn't agreed upon at the same dollar amount in each town. So the school did adopt a new, recertify a new budget. It has gone back to the towns. Is there a responsibility on the town is there anything in the law that says the town has to we're looking for july 1st june 30th is there anything that says the town should meet prior to then would be helpful to meet prior to then must meet prior to that you should be planning a two-town meeting basically is since you're a two-town district um if there's no consensus on the budget mm -hmm. then um you know, what a two-town district must do is to hold a district-wide meeting. And that's when all the residents of both towns have an opportunity to vote on the budget. And it's not any longer by town necessarily, it's by how many residents vote yes mm -hmm. um, as to whether or not the budget would pass. But we can plan that meeting without having heard back from the towns? So at this point in time, so you've already gone to your towns, they've already voted no, mm -hmm. or, or, or I should say they've voted a, an amount that constitutes a no because right. it does not right. um, match the school committee's request. Mm -hmm. So basically that's a no vote. Mm -hmm. So I don't know when your um, are the towns scheduled another town meeting for the purposes of, you know, looking into this? And if so, when? Um, but now that it's getting close to July 1st, I mean, it's... If I could clarify, uh, uh -huh. the, there were two town meetings. Right. The town of Millville has their meeting first. Right. What was proposed at Millville's town meeting was a different number than what was proposed at Blackstone's town meeting. So... Both town meetings, I think, agreed to the numbers that were proposed. The fact is Mil the, the, the budget number proposed at Millville was different than the one proposed at Blackstone. But Millville voted a number. Mm -hmm. right. Clarification, James? Yes. The assessment, that you, the assessment that you gave to Millville. Mm -hmm. Subject to override. On the revised budget. Correct. You revised the assessment, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. The number that they voted at town meeting, they've had one town meeting, mm -hmm. I believe, was that on not the that? revised? That was not on the revised. Okay. No, but the assessment was number, was, it right. was that number equal to or greater than that revised assessment number? Greater than. Their number was greater than? No, no. no. the town no. meeting was lower meeting, than What they assessment. approved was less than okay. the original. Then you don't, then you don't, don't have, have a budget. budget. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. We do not have a budget. So. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm wondering our next step. Mm -hmm. Is did you when you Two recertified the number? Mm -hmm. this, again, recertified assessment. Did Blackstone vote that number or equal equal to that number? Yeah. Equal to that number. Oh, certified to match what yeah. Blackstone approved. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. At, but that was after Millville's okay. meeting. So the question would be, if I could, is mm -hmm. Millville planning on having another town meeting? I guess the, the short answer area. would be, and we've already committed to it, there's a lot more um, than just the school budget going on here, and I know that the Divisional Local Services, and I think um, both Jay and Christine are aware of it too, that we have an upcoming override um, ballot question. 
And uh, when we went to town meeting at that time, the district was there. Um, they said that they were going to stay with the 3%, even though the Finance Committee in Blackstone had looked at giving a, a higher uh, number. And so there was no contest. Um, no argument for more at our town meeting. So at this point in time, uh, we found and discovered uh, once Blackstone had their meeting that that number uh, at Blackstone was higher and the school district had an opportunity to recertify at the Board of Selectmen uh, percentage in Blackstone and the Board of Selectmen percentage that was agreed upon in uh, Millville. Uh, that just recently came to us as a certification of the higher amount. So we're faced with an override ballot on June 19th. We know that if that override does not pass, and that's why this is much more encompassing than just the school district budget, is that, and I know that the uh, Division of Local Services is apprised of this, that we've been in a you know, 10 to 12 year trend of having a structural deficit in which we've patched to meet the obligations of our school district. Uh, in major ways and that more recently those one-time revenues have dried up and we are now faced with a monumental uh, structural deficit that we're trying to not just patch anymore because we don't have that revenue. So it's very hard to shift the attention to yet another uh, town meeting somehow before that vote or immediately after that vote because if this override does not pass the town of Millville will be having another town meeting because we passed a balanced budget with an override if it goes through, uh, and it is not balanced if the override doesn't go through. So we will be having another town meeting if that is the case, uh, in which case then we'd have to also entertain uh, you know, what the additional ask is. Uh, regardless of whether the override were to pass or not, we had included the 3% because Board of Selectmen and Blackstone and also the Board of Selectmen in Millville had come together, which was pretty significant because we haven't been together on those numbers for a number of years more recently. Um, so it's, it's more than just you know, uh, making sure that the budget for the school district's whole. We're talking about a town that um, has got a major structural deficit that needs to be addressed, and, and it's looming within the next you know, two weeks, less than that. So sometime after that, um, that would be an issue to address. It would be wonderful if, uh, and I say this from an administrative perspective and for the solvency of the town, if the major piece we have to address is the additional amount that was certified in the school budget. It will not be so simple if it is not passed. So there is the complexity of that to add in. May, may I speak to that issue? I, I'm Daniel Keyes. I'm the town administrator of Blackstone. And uh, <clears throat> just a few, just so we understand each other. Um, the number changed at last year's town meeting mm -hmm. because the townspeople came to the town meeting and voted a higher number. They added an additional, I think it was $270,000. Mm -hmm. What was it? 285. 285. So we had to add for us. Right, yes, that's correct. So we had to add that on the floor and change and adjust our numbers on the floor to continue our town meeting. So that was a vote of the townspeople, um, and we had agreed to a number. We agreed to a number this year. It was the finance committee that voted the additional ninety-nine thousand four hundred twenty-five dollars. In the citizens of the town voted it. I think it's fair to say. And I want everybody to understand this. Number one, we don't have a financial problem in Blackstone. We're a double A plus rated town. And we'd be triple A plus if the demogra demographics allowed it. And that's from our audit. We have $7 million in reserves. And we run a good operation. There is a financial structural problem in Millville that affects not only the schools, but the total operation of the town. And I think it's important that the townspeople know that. I'm the town administrator in Blackstone, and I'm going to offer this, that I would bring my team into your town and let us come in and take over the town. We did it. I came here seven years ago with no reserves in Blackstone mm -hmm. in an A minus rating. Today we have $7 million, as I said. We've cut employment in the town. 
We've done things that weren't done before, and that's why, and it says it right in our audit report, I didn't make this up, go to Blackstone and see how they run their finances. That's what we've done. We have financial policies and procedures. So when someone comes in, every employee gets it to know how to run the show and know what's expected of them. And that's what's got to be done here. To shortchange the schools is disingenuous because it affects your tax rate and your, your, your juvenile delinquency, and I can go right through it, and I'm not going to tonight. But I just want to set the record straight that we're here in a positive manner to offer our hand in friendship to the town of Millville if those things don't happen for you and getting an override. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, Bob Duval, the Board of Selectmen. <clears throat> Every year we go through this process and it doesn't change, it's getting worse. And it's gonna get worse as we go on. You've said it yourself that we need shared resources. And I've been saying it for a long time that someday it's gonna to come to a point we're gonna to have to regionalize town services. Millville is a town of 3,000 people, Blackstone is roughly 9,000 people. It's time to take a look at sharing the resources from A to Z. This is going to happen in many towns as we go on in the future. It's just that way. And I think that's a good start to do that. I don't wanna talk about the history of problems that we've had in the past because you know we're not gonna accomplish anything doing that. But I think we can accomplish a lot if we work together to try to share resources all the way through from police department, the fire department, the highway department, the actual, the actual, the whole town itself. And I agree with that. I've said it offhand to many people in the past. The chances of it working, I really don't know. But I think it's time that we sit down at the table and do that. Because Dan's right. We're shortchanging the school children by doing this. It's a problem that's been going on year after year after year. And it's not going to go away, even with an override. There's gonna be problems down the road, and I think that this is a way to do it. We shouldn't have two libraries, we shouldn't have two senior centers, we shouldn't have all that. We're too small to be doing that. And that's something that's gonna happen in the future in all the towns. Thank you. Uh, no, go ahead. Uh, you had, I'm, you were deferred. Uh, Dan Keefe, what is like? It's music to my ears that we're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. The attempt has been, the conversation has been ongoing as far as as many people in this room are smiling right now, is trying to attempt to have a conversation of regionalizing resources. That's been a conversation of mine for at least the last couple of years, including the elementary end of our regional agreement. Uh, we, we don't want to forget the history uh, where we came from, because this is around 50 years uh, of this regional agreement. Uh, but we, we had the discussion a couple years ago, which failed at, at Millville's town meeting as regionalizing the elementary end of things uh, because they felt they didn't get all the information they needed. And, and I respect that, that, that decision on, on Millville's part. I've been beat, beating the same drum for the last several years at town meetings on how we have to have these meetings. Um, but music to my ears, because this is the first I really openly heard that sharing resources uh, in the town's end of things, which which uh, will have a direct effect on our regional school district, and 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 I'm I'm glad to hear it. We've we've made the attempt. We've started with small ends with the with the animal control uh, end of things, but hey, we had to start somewhere, and um, uh, I'm very positive uh, hearing that from from the town of Blackstone from its members. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I, I'm always open to regionalizing. I've been doing that since I came on board, which will be almost two years as the first town administrator. I appreciate the olive branch of wanting to cooperate, but to indicate that the town of Millville somehow um, needs a takeover at this point in time, I think is a little bit um, surprising to me to sit in here. I think I'm looking at my board of selectmen and the like. Um, that is the first time I've heard that. Um, I will say that we work very closely in implementing our policies and procedures with the 
uh, support of the department of uh, the division of local services we've done everything that we possibly can in a very short period of time and it, it is true that as a community that statutorily became a town with its own sovereignty there's a lot more than just wanting to say we're a bigger town that now has a double-a bond rating we have been moving in a very short period of time of actually embodying real innovation for a small town that doesn't mean that we haven't reached out and more than just animal control reached out with other partners um, from everything from grants to shared planning in the towns of Uxbridge to regional dispatch um, and walked away from it being able to be better for the town of Mill, uh, Millville and the other towns that we've been engaged in so I I think that um, if this is a discussion that took place it certainly wasn't with the Board of Selectmen in um, the Finance Committee um, and this is the first time we're hearing that and I think that has more repercussions than um, just offering that up front. I think what we wanted to do is talk about not wanting to not be a partner with the school district. I think that's very important. But, you know, saying that we're doing this because, um, and if you talk to the Division of Local Services, this is not a mismanagement problem. So with all due respect, it is a revenue shortfall problem that has to do with the overall monies that are coming into the district and how to create that. In a very short period of time, in two years, we've brought in money into the district um, but it's not being able to keep pace with whether it's an 18 percent or a 10 percent ask I'd ask the state officials what they think is a reasonable amount to increase a school district budget or even a, a municipal budget where we're growing at 0.9 percent because we've been so frugal and so thrifty but regardless we can't keep up with an 18 percent budget ask uh, couldn't even keep up with a 10 percent and I don't think the town of Blackstone could do do that for long either even if you've got the double-a bond rating now I know it's not working and I said that from the very beginning that that's why it's a model that is broken but I don't think a you know takeover of the town of Millville is what we're talking about and, and frankly I'm a little bit um, concerned that that was raised here because that certainly isn't something in the spirit of what we've been talking about with the respective state agencies so I just putting that out there um, because it is something new and for people who want to talk about cooperation I think that's going to be something that um, is going to be drilled home here and uh, and I would ask the, both the entities are we talking about regional uh, appropriate asks on the part of any um, two towns that belong to a regional school district are you seeing 18 percent asks are you seeing 11 percent asks in a budget and and how can a member community whether it's Blackstone or Millville keep up with that well, again, something like an 18% increase, I, I don't often see something along those lines. But um, but there is no such thing as a, you know, what is a typical? I know. We're talking snowflakes here. We know that, right? I mean, you've got eight town regions, you've got six town regions, you've got two town regions. Some have different demographics based on, you know, some different populations. They're all different in terms of that, to that degree. So it's... There is no one size fits all for anything like that. Again, that's why these discussions are important. That's why <coughs> nobody knows the local situation better than everybody who's sitting around this table. That's why it's important to sit down and have these discussions. I you know, believe it in my heart of hearts, I really do. And again, yeah. there's so many variables. Could it be health insurance? Could it be you know, uh, whatever. But. Mm -hmm. If the fact that everybody's getting together and it's collective bargaining season, one town does this, one town does that, what is the schools doing? Sharing that information alone could be extremely helpful for managing what we all have to manage, which are the public resources that we're all, we've all been entrusted. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not trying to sound like a Pollyanna, trust me, I'm, I'm far from it. But uh, I'm as skeptical as the next guy. But. You know, one of the things that I've learned in my many years here is, obviously, we've got to have these discussions. It, it, it's, it's, it's critical to just move beyond some, you know, if there's issues, okay, let's just, let, let's just see what we can do and just move beyond it, do, do, do the best we can. You know, we're not here to cast aspersions. We're here, we're here to, try to, to try to move, move the ball forward. 
One of the things I mean to recognize too is, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the regional budget went up by 18. No, no, it, it did was not. The town of Thank Millville's you. Did not. Assessment. Right. So, correct. Correct. I, I mean that's that. an important that. thing well, to. All we ever hear is 18. So that's an important thing to look at in terms of Millville's. Minimum local contribution is increasing a lot more dramatically right. than Blackstone's right. is. So that's obviously a big jump. The other part of it is, is said, the shift in assess assessment in terms of enrollments and so forth. Mm -hmm. So two pieces of Millville's budget mm -hmm. is increasing right. much more than Blackstone's. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, proportionally, obviously Blackstone's bigger and they have more, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the money is higher anyway, but I'm saying percentage-wise, proportionately right. wise. So, I mean, it's two things, and that's why it, it would be good to look in terms of moving forward, uh, and Zach had mentioned this, in terms of looking at some of the statistics, and we certainly can in terms of trying to look at some of the, the minimum contributions, it, to see whether or not, let's say, Millville will continue to grow, let's say, disproportionately to Blackstone, because it is true, Blackstone minimum contribution is not going up as much. And so yours is going up a lot more, you know, and that makes a big difference. Right, and that has more to do with the regional agreement in the way that that is structured based on enrollment and all Well, that piece is, is state requirement, but, right. but you're right. And then in terms of the overage above that, um, you know, then you're, you're paying, you know, probably a higher proportion of that. That's why the details not not in total because obviously the, you represent the smallest but again proportionately you know you're and, and also in terms of the fact that if your minimum local contribution is rising and you've only got a one year window in terms of change if your enrollment changes that can create a huge shift yeah big spikes and in, in, in peaks and valleys and just mm -hmm. that's not what you want you, you want to try to keep it as steady as possible. So yeah. anything you can do to avoid those peaks and valleys, I think is, is worth th at least thinking about and considering. Yeah, and that again is your regional agreement and the concept of taking a look at how you assess, you know, both towns and potentially having three-year rolling averages or five-year or, or potentially another method altogether. But it's but, it's probably worthy of a discussion. But, but that's a long-term discussion. But that's a, but, that's and, not going to solve our, this yeah. issue. Our figures yeah. haven't, haven't spiked. I mean, they've been fairly consistent, you know, a point, point one. But or the minimum less. contributions has shifted. Yeah. And Millville's getting a higher minimum contribution. For the law, yeah, that, yeah, that's the way the law works. So, but yep. that's that's yep. part of yeah, partially the, the crisis. If part of what's the crisis, but you know, yeah. part of part, part of, of the broken. issue of why it's this year. Yeah, we, uh, we can't we can't tell you about like how what what chapter seven will be like in ten right. years. No, but as far as minimal local contribution goes, those are the kind of things we might be able to model going out a few years to be able to work with Zach to try to help yeah. give you that type of information. Because again. Having these kind of meetings and having that kind of data is going to be crucial for you folks to be making those kind of decisions. But I, I, I still would like to go back to my original question um, in the sense of, of, of timeline. Um, I think it's really important, and we've had many discussions as a school committee, to have a budget in place on July 1st, and um, it makes a huge impact. We have a new superintendent coming on board. We have, you know, we want to move move forward, and so I don't know if there's things that can be done. If we schedule a, a community meeting or if Millville can schedule a contingent um, town meeting, I don't, I don't know what our options are, so I don't know. So if um, the override passes, mm -hmm. you're still mm -hmm. not, you would still not have sufficient dollars authorized to support the reconfigured, re revoted right. school committee budget. You right. should still be shot right. on that. Mm -hmm. About 40,000. 362. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I guess, there's, I guess there's a couple of options. Um, okay. One, this is assuming for the moment the override mm -hmm. passes, mm -hmm. you know. Um, one, the school committee can again reconsider the budget. I'm not offering these as my suggestions, I'm just pointing it out. The school committee could again reconsider the budget, reducing it such that the amount that Millville does pass in terms of the override would would meet. And I guess that's the three percent or whatever it was yeah. that was agreed to. So that's obviously the school committee always has that option. Um, the other option, obviously, is 
um, Millville could have her have a town meeting uh -huh. to authorize that additional forty thousand, whatever, whatever, yeah, 40, whatever the amount is. Right. They can have another town meeting, you know, for for the purposes of doing that. And again, I guess the third option is to hold a district wide meeting, and that's the regional school district's responsibility to call a district wide meeting, and it's a meeting at which again all the residences of residents of the town have an opportunity to vote on the school committee budget uh, and you know so do I we, think those do we are have the to wait three options for the go ahead Sarah for this district-wide meeting do we have to wait for something from Millville like an official no we're not going to I mean, have a town I, I meeting guess, or I, I think from hate to give advice on this, but I mean, from Millville's perspective, I mean, I, I guess the fact that, um, you know, even the override will not not be sufficient, mm -hmm. that, yeah. you know, it would might be wise to schedule another town meeting, mm -hmm. um, you know, because one way or another, I mean, it's probably not going to match, again, unless the school committee chooses to reduce the budget. Which would be a reduction so of $140,000, which... On top of one, one point six million. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, I would think either Millville should schedule a town meeting. I don't know what, how much notice you need to, to be able to do that. Fourteen days. Fourteen days. But there's also the other option, which I, I think we've been through this before. In um, my very first um, month or so that we were here. There was the option in which there was a, a, a higher amount um, that the Board of Selectmen had agreed to uh, and that we knew we would have a fall town meeting um, and that that money would be appropriated then, but it was agreed upon by a vote through the Board of Selectmen um, and then ratified again at a town meeting. Our town council had looked at it as that. At, uh, not a legal budget. Oh. You might you might have agreed to it, right? No, <laughs> but but that was something. It wasn't a legal remember. budget. Yeah, that's it was right. something that happened. Well, what so we that did, we prevented yeah. the, yeah. the one. Right. Two years ago, what we ended yeah. up doing was Probably. the school committee recertified on July 18th, mm -hmm. a lower number. Millville took no action, so the awarding authority, the approval authority, didn't take no action. So 45 days after that last recertification, the budget became law. It's way down the CMR. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they they Shows to take town no meeting. action, right? Okay. Right. 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 So if the right. awarding authority has right. takes yeah. no action, right. then, right. then right. the budget so becomes the budget budget yeah, because the, after because 45 the, uh, days. The wouldn't have changed. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Well, that's what we did two years ago. Right. Okay. We hope to avoid that. What would be the reason yeah. to do it that way, though, to not go to a town meeting? We did it then because it wasn't practical. Uh, the, actually, the school district had tried to convene a meeting, and the, the actual election warrant was voided, null and void, because it wasn't um, put together appropriately at that time. So it actually was um, better um, in that regard at that time because there was no way to actually do um, a, a town meeting at that time. Well, what so, about this time, I guess? Well, I think we're talking about that. And I'm, you know, I'm just the town administrator. That's one of the things we do here collectively. We, we bring it before uh, boards, and they are the election warrant setting board. So I'm not going to speak for my board. Um, that's one of the things that we try not to do. Uh, we are in a government. We don't just unilaterally uh, make those decisions. But that's what happened the last time. So there was another option. It was one that actually we tried to work through at that time, um, being you know first um, here in the town, and uh, you know it was one of those things. I think the board of selectmen recognized it was a better option even for the school district at that time, despite the fact that you know that uh, election warrant was um, considered um, illegal at that time. We couldn't go forward. So that was an unusual, but it was something that once again I think the dynamics of the two working together to try to support that. Jane, do you know, is July 14th, uh, July 14th, is that the 45 days? From when you right. received the notice? No, no, no. When was, was it? May 30th, or <coughs> what's the date on the notice? It was May 30th? May 30th. We voted on the 30th. May 30th. It was brought to you the next day. Okay. So 40, I thought it was July 14th as well when I looked at it. I just did it in my head. I wasn't sure. So. Is it July 14th? I had July 14th as well. Okay. It 
doesn't help July 1st. Right. So I guess that was maybe the question did we were asking. Yeah, did we get an answer for that? Do we need to wait mm -hmm. the 45 days before we can, as a district, call a, two -town a district wide meeting? meeting? What is the 45 days? Or whatever they were referring to. That's the inaction. The if inaction. Millville doesn't do anything, it will just recertify at the higher After budget. July 1st, oh, though. no, you do not have to, yeah, you would not have to wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 45 days. So I would, I would respectfully ask the Millville Board of Selectmen to hold a town meeting, a contingent town meeting, um, before July 1st, before actually June 28th, uh, to consider the recertified budget. That way we would have a budget. If that $39,362 was approved, mm -hmm. then we would have a budget for July 1. And we would only need to cut a million five from the school budget. I don't know if it needs to be contingent, though. It needs to be held regardless, right? right. Well, it would be after the override right. anyway, because it has to be 14 days from now. Yeah. The early. Is that what you said? Right. And if you would need 14 days for the warrant process, it would then be you'd, after, have to, that's you'd have to vote to hold that town meeting soon in order to get it in before the end of June. 21st, we have a special thought. Yeah. We, um, you don't meet again. Oh, yeah. you don't meet the again. Board of Selectmen uh, would uh, consider setting uh, our, a, a special select board meeting to discuss this uh, at the earliest possible convenience or uh, time. In that uh, we we voted on on the uh, the uh, three point four percent increase last night to approve that. But that's outside of the uh, the budget that was uh, presented at our annual town meeting. Right. But we sh uh, the the bo the select board needs to meet. Uh, the mill board board of select would need to meet as the earliest possible convenience to to. Is pardon? As an agenda item. As an agenda item, yes. No. Specifically, so it would be near your next meeting in two weeks that you would discuss. Or sooner. Oh, it would, he's going to try to you would call a board yeah. meeting yeah. sooner. As soon as possible, I hope. Right. That's okay. That's what we're asking. So that's. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We are well past our commitment of time, and we have not really talked about <laughs> long term financial <laughs> stability. Oh. So I will leave it as to this table as to what folks would. I, I just want to add that uh, it's taken the town of Millville 12 years to get to this point. In the last two years, thanks to the assistance of uh, DLS, uh, Zach Blake and his company, um, they re uh, we invited them in to, to review our process. And the, in that process, the recommendations were consider hiring a town administrator. The town of Millville has done that. We have professional accounting at this point. Um, we've made great strides in the last two years. And it's all come down uh, for, for 10 years running we've used to fill the holes in the, in the town's budget with just one-time uh, revenues. Uh, we need to, to progress forward and I heard that the statement today no override no town of Millville. <coughs> we, we need to continue on this course. I, I believe strongly believe the town has been uh, is addressed the, the recommendations from the DLS and we're making significant progress, but we're trying to rectify a situation that's, that's occurred over many years. Uh, we can't continue doing that, but uh, we have uh, Justin Cole, he's doing a great job. Um, 
Our administrator is... She, she, she's in there 60 hours a week. Oh, More than that. <laughs> but, uh, so we want to get to our feet and, and, and be able to survive as a town. Another element in this is that we really need to take a look at the regional agreement. And uh, the board has select, uh, established a goal to start in July to look at other solutions or possible solutions going forward. What can we do to better rectify this and be able to, to keep pace uh, with the, the with revenue uh, to keep pace with with uh, so it was an ad hoc um, education committee um, which was proposed that we'll after we need to get through this before we tackle something else to look at all of the educational needs from financial to students to building um, a global look at that to see where we're going with that in the town and how that will look in the future. So that, that is a goal for our next fiscal year. I would like for a, a goal for next year to set quarterly meetings where we all get together. I mean, this shouldn't be a historic meeting like they're saying. So, I mean, looking globally is great, but we should probably be starting locally and meeting and having these discussions. So I don't know if that goes into long-term yeah, planning, but. It's, no. mm -hmm. it's all, also important that uh, we get uh, residents involved or attending meet these meetings, uh, it, public forums, their, their inputs uh, are valuable. It, in terms of not only uh, being informed, but to understand how municipal government actually works. I'm being very crude at this, but uh, my point is that civic engagement is critical. With all of that said, Tom Hull, uh, member of the Select Board in Millville, um, nobody can take away the strides we've made in the last two years, and I want to thank everybody who's had part on that, uh, or part of that, or part in that. Um, we, we've brought professionalism back uh, into the town, but um, although Mr. Keyes may, may have used a harsh word, I th and I know uh, because we've discussed it, we're all looking for different avenues and sharing services is a great way to look at things the announcement came to a surprise as, as for everybody i think but it was good to hear so to not take advantage or to continue conversation amongst th this type of of uh Avenue. It doesn't mean that Millville needs to uh, completely combine or lose any of its autonomy, but I think we could do some really great things together, whether it's a fire, uh, fire department or a, a library or a council on aging and ease the burden on both towns some a little bit. Um, I think it was a surprise, but it was it was good to hear. So. Um, I think we can all look forward to to working closely um, and exploring avenues, and hopefully we'll we'll come to some success with those. I would just add that if there are defined conversations around particular areas, that there are state resources available to help ease some of those mm -hmm. transition-related costs and whatnot, and I'd be more than willing to help facilitate whatever conversations are necessary to tap into those grant programs that are available. Had we not made the changes that we made over the last two years, we wouldn't have gotten through these last two mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. So kudos to all that were involved. Um, and I, I think I look forward to uh, looking through the open door and seeing what we come up with. To follow up on, on Selectman Hull's comments, to think that we can do well together. We have proven that we can do well together. This is 50 years of an agreement uh, that we've, we've been overall successful, which we, what we have is what neither town could afford on its, on its own. Uh, moving forward, 
I would I would not want to leave here tonight without another proposal date for a, a meeting in September or October mm -hmm. uh, with, the, with the help from, from the professionals that are with us, uh, with us this evening. Um, I, I have to state that this should come as no real surprise after, because I do keep in touch with Millville pretty closely. I, I look at Millville and I've always looked at it as a, a partnership in, in the regional school agreement, which has been successful. And, and I don't like hearing, I don't care what Blackstone does, I don't care what Millville does, because cooperatively together, when we're, when we're successful, it reflects on, on the education of our children. Um, so, you know, so I do take a little offense, you know, with, I look at maybe being as in going through the school district, starting in seventh grade uh, with, with children from Millville at the time, I don't see the difference between the, the people in the two communities because we went through the district together and after a week or two of first meeting the kids from Millville, we were all from the same town as far as, as, far as we were concerned as, as children. And now the children in the district start extremely early. I think they go, they're at pre-K uh, together. Um, so I would definitely love, love to continue these conversations, have a plan in place where both communities keep their identity but work together for a common goal uh, of keeping our towns affordable and, and giving the best education that we possibly can afford to the children of both communities. So I, I hope that we leave here tonight with another date to uh, continue, continue to work forward uh, to the benefit of both towns and, and the children of the district. Anyone else? I would just add that if you decide on a date, um, that my office would be available to be there to help facilitate whatever is necessary. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I actually have a question related to school budgets. Um, I don't know if you guys can help answer this question. We have quite a few students that go out of district for education. Um, some of them at Blackstone Valley Tech, who we have an agreement with, some we don't. Um, and you guys might have to help me on these numbers. There's a couple of schools that the kids go to that we are charge an exorbitant amount of money, way more than the kids in town are charged. Um, and I think it's like 29000 for one of the schools. Millville, yes. Sorry. Um, so is there any way we can have any control over those types of costs? Well, again, part of that, I think you're probably talking either for the local school or an yes. agricultural school. North Aggie. Aggie. Yeah. 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 Or Keith. Uh, unfortunately, Keith the kids Tech. have the opportunity to go to those agricultural schools. But there's no cost cushion in place for the towns? No, as a matter of fact, they had legislation passed that said they could pass along whatever the, pro whatever the costs were to whoever, the, to whoever goes. So, okay. Uh, that was legislation was passed uh, quite a few years ago. Okay. Uh, so there's nothing we, we can normally do. calculate those rates based on what districts spend, but yeah, um, the Is there any type of state refund or anything that's out there we don't know about. No reimbursement that we're aware of, other than the chapter right. seven. There's received. no limit, huh. and there's no limit. The towns no. are. I think. <laughs> well, for the most part, well, again, obviously the students that go to Blackstone Valley, obviously that you know, you're a member of that yeah. particular district. Uh -huh. The but in the event that there's programs that they don't offer, right. yes. kids can go to other programs. Right. And again, um, that's our yeah. so Tri County, yeah. Yeah. Right. Tri County, whatever. Yeah. So we're we're at a point where we're now paying to send them to Framingham to Keith Tech because not because they didn't have BVT didn't have a program, but the student didn't get accepted into BVT and then found the loophole of some bizarre of a program program that BVT didn't have and so because they didn't get into BVT then they're now going to Framingham to Keefe Tech I guess my question is how far so can they go to the Cape can we pay for transportation to the Cape because they have some obscure program like where does the line end I mean we're paying both towns actually have a student this year at Keefe Tech and I believe the price tag to the town for transportation is about $23,000 each. At some point, that sucks the life out of a, a budget that that no one can say anything to at town meeting, and that is very frustrating. I have a question on the transportation. Mm -hmm. We both have the student going to keep tech. Mm -hmm. 
you sh how are they transported? Shared. 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 Well, the two. Okay. They're going in a van or something. But you both sharing. Yeah. Okay. Both things. Yeah. But. Two hundred dollars a day. We split the cost. Yes. Split yeah. the cost. We split but, the cost. But that's shared services. Right. Mm -hmm. Contrary to what that is shared services. Yes. And that's what I wanted to make sure. Because we hear, and I've seen it, that this community sends a kid there, and this, this next town <coughs> sends a kid there, and they take. Those two buses or two vans are going side by side down the road, and each town's paying a hundred percent. So at least you're sharing. We yeah. see we see that a lot in special education too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Special yeah. education kids going to day placements because they're outside the town. Yeah. You know, we put together a website to show where kids are going. Like by you could go look by the private school, and you can see like who's sending kids to that private school. So if your neighbor is sending kids. Well, maybe you can kind of team up on the district. So we could partner with... It's not with a panacea, but it's, you know, yeah. anything we can do to kind of help That's the district. Cool. Are we limited to Blackstone Millville, or can we, like, oh. No. No. partner not up not with... You can do any surrounding area town yeah. that you might be driving through on the way. I mean, yeah. obviously, you don't want to go way out of your way. That's not going to save any money. But, um, you know, you can look at surrounding area towns to see whether or not on the way to that private school... And, but the unfortunately, else. special ed is the only is the only thing that has something in its so regulations about how long yeah, a child can be on a bus. Yeah. 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 You can't exceed it out. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. get the parent to sign off on it, but this, um, parents aren't going to sign off on okay. something just to save you money. Right. You're going to have to show them that it's better for them to have other children in the car. It's like you know less inclusive. You know. But we could do that for Voltec too, possibly. On the on the Voltec, if you have a program that the kids are going to and let's say you both have quite a few kids going into a program that keep at uh, that um, Blackstone Valley is not offering and other member communities of Blackstone Valley are doing the same thing you might want to petition and ask the school committee mm -hmm. to consider adding that program to their school okay. be cheaper than paying all that transportation because they didn't get into I mean, sometimes kids are going because they want to, you know, they their friends are going to that school, they want to go to that school. They're not, they're not set on whatever program they're entering because they don't know at this point in time in their lives, right? So, I mean, there's a bunch, there's many different reasons why kids' school choose what vocational programs they're going into. But if Blackstone but offers no it, they can't go right. somewhere else. Right. Right. So if Blackstone's no, offering no, it. There's no mile limit on how far they can choose find this program of their dreams. Okay. They want to take diesel mechanic? And well, a superintendent can say, no, that that's too long on a bus. Yes. The local superintendent approves or disapproves those particular things. They know that's that's too far. Yeah, two hours each way is... And again, they can fight that to the Department of Education, and somebody in the Department of Education may overrule that, but, you know... If the Department of Education overrules that, will they contribute to the... <laughs> <laughs> they do, they'll, reimb they'll reimburse you for the cost of local out of district, but I hope it's more than the 250000 that they appropriated this year, which is a yeah. jump change. I just wanted to ask one question on the transportation. So, that, like, currently, with the, like, the Keefe Tech student as well as I th um, the Tri-County, the towns themselves may pay directly for the transportation. If that's allocated through the school district's budget, can that be done so they can be re reimbursed by Chapter 70? No. no. <laughs> but the towns are reimbursed for that. Well, again, unfortunately, it was only, there's been very few dollars appropriated for that particular line item. It's much different than regional transportation. Regional transportation, I think this year is going to be about 70% yeah. reimbursement. Um, last week, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, so, but regional, uh, out of district vocational, the entitlement statewide is about $4 million. They only appropriated like 250000 mm -hmm. It's only been that way the last couple of years. It was like two, three million prior to that. I don't, I don't know why it was cut, to be honest. Um, but it's only like six cents on the dollar you know, right now. Um, I, I don't, I don't understand why it's been that way. And again, that's a legislative decision in terms of how they fund, how they fund the budget. 
We don't have. I don't have a money tree in my backyard to be able to pick it up. I didn't bring my wheelbarrow with me, unfortunately. I apologize. Next time. Yeah, next time, maybe, yeah. Yes. Yeah, the fall. Do you want any apple seed? I've got to leave. I've got to be at the selectman meeting. Yep. Yep. Join me. You've got major transfers tonight. Can we... Uh, maybe oh, yeah, you should definitely be contacting your local legislators yeah, can we? about that. We use outside vocational. As a matter of fact, I did speak to the town of Cowboy. In mm -hmm. Because I talked about how they had. Right there. Oh, well. <laughs> well, he spoke on the phone. <laughs> I apologize, Justin. I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, we spoke. Uh, we spoke. I don't care what I they do. Yeah. 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 I have one more question. Um, you mentioned the E and D accounts for the school. Um, I know the towns are requested to keep their their stabilization, their free cash stabilization on a certain percentage. Are the schools required to keep theirs at a minimum no percentage? They keep it, they can't, they can't exceed 5%. Can't exceed. Can't exceed yeah. 5%. Right, I know that, but is there a minimum? There's no threshold? recommended minimum that I'm... Okay. But I'm, the recommended maximum. I, I would honestly defer to someone like MJ, who, right. who's been in two regional school districts, and and say what she thought was a reasonable. Again, it's different based on your makeup of, of towns and what have you. Mm -hmm. But the, the only problem with EMD, and it depends on the community, to be honest with you, or the school district, you don't want to use, rely on E&D, like one-time revenue, to balance your budget, because if that dries up, then what do you do? Okay? And, and, and then you become neutral. 5% is not a lot of money when you consider, you know, $10 million budget. But... Again, you don't want to go through. You want to use it for things that you won't be able to, you know, the one-time cost, but not to go through as operating. Right. And districts that do that, we ran into that. You know, districts that do that, you run into the problem that, again, like just using like free cash. Same thing with free cash. If you rely on balancing the budget with free cash and you don't have it, then what happens? To those structural deficits. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Okay. But again, you can't have more than five percent. Right. Yeah. And we are at one about one point five. Which is still question. seven times more than we have in free cash. <laughs> so um, I have a question. Something around there. Five percent. Okay. Let's say for example, the Millville override doesn't pass. Mm -hmm. We reach an impasse on our budget. We're not able to pay our bills. We're not able to get it done. Because quite honestly, with with the certified school budget we're looking at a, a deficit without an override of about two hundred and eighty thousand dollars add add the exponent to that for the opportunity cost which is your unemployment which is because because that's all people which is your unemployment your out your outsourcing of services etc so let's so to get two hundred eighty thousand dollars out of the budget my quick math puts me we have to cut about four hundred thousand out of the budget which is not going to happen and and actually be able to exist so what then happens to the school being being a regional district you know being regionalized within the district if millville's not able to pay our own bills we're certainly not going to be able to pay that bill well, what's going to happen to us if we can't certify a budget and we go down that road well, I, I guess what I would say is if there's a two-town meeting, I would make sure that everyone that was in that two-town meeting understood what the ramifications were of passing a budget that would mean whatever the ramifications would mean. And I would think that all the boards would, would want their, would, would want their uh, residents to know. And, and MJ won't certify a budget that's not balanced when it comes to tax rate setting. Well, I would certainly hope not. <laughs> no, but but it, uh, Paul's point is a good point, though. So, so Millville doesn't pass the override, so doesn't balance it, its budget, so it won't get certified. But the school has its community district meeting and and votes, mm -hmm. and so passes its budget, or or not. Let let's assume it passes its budget if it does, then. Is Millville on the hook for that? If yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. They're on the hook. There could be there could be no police and fire. And right. All the money could be going to the schools right. because they'd be on the hook right. if the members of the two town meeting voted for the budget. And there's been court cases that have validated that. 
But if we can't, if we don't certify our town budget and we aren't able to set our tax rate and we aren't able to collect taxes, they can send out the bill as much as they want. But if we can't write a check for it, then what happens? They have to go we into some kind of receivership. We haven't run into that situation. That's a real hypothetical. Yeah, that is a hypothetical. Because, because that, that begs the question is when you're in a regional school district, how does that work? If if you're reviewing contracts and you're reviewing agreements and you're reviewing all those things in that kind of situation, you know, we have a lot of combined stuff with the school with the school district. So it's not going to be all just our stuff that, that the, the DOR is looking at. It's going to be our combined stuff, too. So that's the, the question is, you know, where where does that go? I mean, how does that work in be that? testing the waters from both agencies doing this with them. I mean, the reality I'm not is... not sure you want to be a pioneer. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a cheap educational expense, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't want to, but, you know, you know, the Finance Committee has made the recommendation to the selectmen to have an override. You know, we've made that recommendation in past years. We've made that recommendation for this year. And for that reason is we don't want to go down that road. But... From, from the standpoint of myself and the standpoint of, uh, you know, members of the select members of the finance committee, whatever, y you have to always have that, that contingency in your head about what's going to happen if, what's going to happen if, if that happens, you know. There, there are a number of strategies, you know, this isn't, if the override doesn't pass, you could attempt another override to just try and get through this year. You know, there are options that are out there. Right. And those conversations are gonna have to happen come June 20th if the override isn't successful. And DLS will be there to help these this community I, I right-size mean, that budget. It was generous of, of the town administrator, Blackstone, to offer to come and help us, but their tax rate is $19.49 a thousand, and their median house price is $40,000 more than ours. If we were charging nineteen forty nine a thousand, we wouldn't be having this right. discussion. So you know, it, it's not a question of of us doing it wrong. It's a question. I don't think so. Anyway, it's a question of not having enough money coming in. Nobody anticipated that when Prop Two and a Half went through and passed. Nobody anticipated the inflation rate on certain things such as health insurance back then. Okay. Yeah. So, unfortunately, you're not the only one that's getting up against that wall. However, we're trying to go through, we will go through and get all the resources, we have the, you know, all the expertise we can go through. The first thing you do is you go through and you have that override, all right? You go through and have that override vote. If it doesn't pass, then maybe a suggestion, and then this is just a suggestion, maybe you go through and have another override vote at the amount that you need for this year only, and you start with that. I mean, yeah, sometimes just getting the first override's the hardest. The other thing, I mean, you, you do need to kind of make known, as Jay said, you know, the impact of, of what it means. You know, if you don't have the override, if the override doesn't pass, um, you know, the public needs to know, and uh, they make whatever decision they make, but uh, then you're all in this together. I mean, that, then they'll be prepared for a takeover or, you know, or, or whatever I mean, we structured might our happen. Our intentionally to only levy to the appropriation. We didn't. We didn't structure our override to to levy, uh, you know, the, the total amount and, and throw some into the to a stabilization. We we are already intending to levy to appropriation. So so having an override for one year is is going to be the same vote as we're having now. Essentially, essentially, only we're going to have to have multiple votes over multiple years to accomplish the goal that we're attempting. I mean, I mean, the way we're seeing right now, the way the town meeting budget was amended, I mean, for FY19, we're going to be, with the school's additional ask, it would bring us to $700,000 in all. You know, no, no one-time revenue sources available. You know, that's what we've done the last five, six, ten years, whatever it is. Um, you know, so we're $700,000 short, say, 
um, and we're asking for a million dollar override, right? So I mean, the difference between those two is not substantial, um, especially where whatever's going to go on the tax rate is only what we need, right? So I think that's just you know not not that everyone around this table hasn't hasn't heard this you know at public hearings and at town meeting and everywhere else. You know, but it's not it's not like we need to scratch together a hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars. I mean we'll be seven hundred thousand dollars short with the school's additional uh thirty nine thirty two. Three sixty two. Um, that that they certified. And again, if, if if we don't get the override, um, you know, with or without the school's money, you know, as Paul said, I mean, you know, upwards of, you know, three or maybe four hundred thousand dollars that we have to cut. Which I mean, at this point, again, for a town that's three thousand people and of our size, um, is going to be basically paying the school, paying our retirement, and whatever all obligations we have, and, uh, and, and closing everything. Else. It's a just, bad situation. Hence the silence. And we did that, yeah. you know, through multiple hearings town meetings, community forums, and in the end, you know, the non-override budget that the finance committee had uh, deliberated on in terms of what would be cut and went through. You're talking about no senior center, you're talking about no library, you're talking about no trash pickup, you're talking about turning off street lights, you're talking about having lost positions in the town hall through consolidation and innovation and now we're talking about literally the public safety part of the community along with any other job so we're not talking about we didn't take those hard decisions we just also knew that another 300,000 men we're talking about our fire department we're talking about our police department we're talking about essential personnel you know the one tax collector treasurer the one town clerk so you want to mothball even further, it's, it's that kind of thing. When we, were, when we were deliberating, we had certain criteria of what to cut and what not to cut. What we did not cut was health and safety of the residents, maintenance of assets, and ability to raise and collect revenue. Everything else was fair game. And that still put us about $250,000 in the red just maintaining those those aspects of our budget so do we want to start talking about the health and safety of the residents do we want to start talking about our ability to collect revenue that's kind of counterproductive it's like cutting off a leg when you make your money from running marathons so, i mean it doesn't make any sense to do that so that's why we're frustrated and that's why we're sitting here because because there's there's always that possibility that it won't pass, and then now what? <laughs> you know now we're really in deep trouble, and and that's gonna affect every everybody at the school level too. And I'd just like to say again, this would have happened even sooner had we not made the decisions to implement a town clerk and a professional accountant and a board of assessors, this would have happened even sooner. So we made the steps, we took the steps to try to fix it. And they were all good decisions, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. It may, may have been too little too late because the issue goes back for so many years. We were fortunate enough to have the free cash to be able to patch things for this long, but now it's just gone. So it is a revenue issue. It's not a mismanagement issue. It's a revenue issue. I think the DLS can speak to that you know, and, and confirm that yeah. sentiment. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would add, we came in, we did a detailed financial management review mm -hmm. of the town of Melville. At that time, we found substantial issues. Um, you guys were working out of a condemned building at that point. Um, you've addressed, from my recollection, uh, all, if not most, of those recommendations within that. Um, we had a 20-year-old <coughs> software system that we were doing our accounting on. Correct. Uh, you've, you've made tremendous strides. I, I agree with that. I confirm what you know the findings in our in our report that you've addressed those and 
but you've got a, a decade's worth of financial problems that are coming to a head that need to be addressed. And mm -hmm. that's a policy, policy decision by the residents of this community as to whether or not, how they're gonna get through this. Is it through an override or some other action? Um, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there a request to have an additional meeting? Mm -hmm. Sarah, you want to do Wednesday, September 19th? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody? Everybody? Wednesday, September 19th. It's 5 o'clock too early for people. It is Yom Kippur. Do no, you have any no, celebrating? Okay. No, we don't want to do that. Yom Kippur? 5 o'clock is too early. Okay. I don't need to before, but. Are we doing a Wednesday? Oh, well, Monday we, is Monday is Board of Selectmen, Millville. Tuesday is Board of Selectmen, Blackstone. 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 Board of Selectmen, depending on but the week. The first and third. <laughs> first oh, and actually, third. theirs is different. Theirs There's is every holiday. other. Yeah, it's a crazy. What about the 26th? That's another Wednesday. 26th? Mm -hmm. I'd like a camp change. Yeah. 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 That's fine. I'm, I'm out of the country that week, I think. September 26th, but 6? Yeah, sure. At 6 o'clock? Is that better for people? For the working? 6 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Wednesday, September, tentative, Wednesday, September 26th at 6 p.m.? Yeah. Did you give just one date, Jane? Just one date, you said the 26th? I did, but I, I oh, okay. that's all I heard. I, was, yeah. I thought you said two dates over there. That's fine. And who would said just set the agenda for that? Date. Who would set the agenda for that? Hmm. Hmm. I would say you, since you are bringing the two communities together. It's not okay. Millville inviting Blackstone in the school committee. Jane, that's what I did. That's what we did at our regional school. So it's just easier. Okay. The school do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, what impact on the agenda? Sure. Did you say we need to send you a special request? I don't need a special request. Okay, I think it's not. Anyone? Everyone? Send you a location. A scroll. I'm sorry. Yes, this is, I mean, we can certainly make our table bigger and longer to fit everyone on it. Sorry, Bri. That's good. Mr. Uh, but we can certainly make the table longer. Uh, but does this place work well for people? It is anyway. Yes. Yes, it does. What? Yeah. Is there any anything else? Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, even though we don't move. We sent one to his dad. Go. Second. And again, I really appreciate you coming here tonight. Yes. Thank you all.